Welcome everybody to today's uh, Tram Talks and um, I am very very excited to bring to the uh, the presentation series that we're doing the amazing John Woodman who is one of the one and only one and only legends in Blackpool Transport so yeah. we're capturing Blackpool Transport's history and but also transporting Blackpool's history as well it's this huge huge debt that we owe this man for oh, for, thank you. Oh, for I remember that yeah <laughs> we do we do because Often I've spoken about things in these interviews, actually, John, and refer to some of the evidence and information that you've brought to life in, right. and so on through, through your research. So, so I couldn't have a better guest, and I've been really excited about, about this. So, so welcome, John. Welcome. So, so how did you sort of um, have this, this? Where did it all start, John? Started in Bispam. Oh, yeah. Um, started in Bispam. Um at Bispam Endowed School, ah. which is the old school at the roundabout at Bispam. Oh, yes, yeah. Which I attended as a, uh, I was going to say as an infant, not as an infant, but um, in my very young years. And um, the reason it started there is because if I look through the, uh, the fence of the playground, I'm looking at the terminus of the number nine bus. Ah. And I would always be curious about what the buses were that were parked there. And in those days, we're talking early 50s. Yes, yeah. Um, they were sometimes the pre-war titans. Yeah. And um, uh, that's partly one reason. The other reason is, I suppose, that further up Red Bank Road, was the Dominion Cinema oh, in those days, yeah, yeah. which I used to go to on a Saturday afternoon matinee for my sixpence uh -huh. and get my weekly entertainment, if you will. Um, and as you know, the, the cinema w was more or less next to Bispam Tram Depot. Yes, yeah. So not only was the tram depot there, but there was also another bus terminus, which was the 15A, right. which was parked in the front of the uh, tram shed so after the films were over i used to go and wander in to the tram depot to see what was there or not there um and it stimulated basically my my interest in the whole setup so, so how old would you have been then john i suspect i would have been between six um six and ten See, I have this theory, and it's something I've only come across through through uh, the work we've done at Tramtown, is that what you're doing when you're about five, six, seven, it defines your entire life in so many ways. All these interests are, are absorbed. Now, some people forget them. They, they become teenagers and discover right. girls, yeah. and but eventually it comes back to them. Because the amount of visitors that we get said, oh, yeah, I've come back. And they, these are like time machines. Yes, for yes, they are. Take they are living time days. capsules and say, yeah. Um, and well, I've got quite vivid memories of those early days. And um, I went through a sort of metamorphosis, which uh, started off really with steam loco spotting and the Ian Allen, you know, um, yeah. engine spotters books. And then I gravitated onto Blackpool buses. Yeah, and yeah. then I gravitated from there onto Blackpool trams, and this is all in the space of about five or six years. Wow! Yeah, and and I imagine there being, as you do when you're young, that would have been completely normal, wouldn't it? That you were living in such a heart of transport. Great, tra great entertainment. Um, yeah. uh, I was going to say living history, but it was it was just um, living full stop. Yes. I didn't regard it as history. Yeah, um, yeah. And I didn't have a camera in those days. So it's all sort of memory in my mind. Um, and then later I, uh, I, I was given um, pocket money enough to sort of buy a brownie oh, Kodak yeah. uh, camera and uh, started taking snaps, as it was, um, on 120 uh, film. Of, I think you got eight photos for your... Know, Two shillings and sixpence, and um, and that's that's um, that brought me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So you started going from Bispam to other parts. Correct, of, correct, of correct. Town. Yeah. So did you have a favourite part where you think, oh, I want to go and capture this? Or no, no, because there was just so much, and it was all different wherever you went. 
There was Bundle Street Depot, there was Martin Tram Depot, there was Bisbon Tram Depot, oh. the Rigby Road bus, obviously buses, yeah. and um, there was even Thornton Gate sidings and Copse Road Tram Depot. So there was a whole uh, menu of places yes. uh, to, to, to look out for. Um, and there was no one in particular, that I, except perhaps for Martin, uh, yeah. that I, um, I sort of fixated on. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, because it, it, it shouted corporate pride, didn't it, really? Well, the building itself was yeah. uh, the, the sort of emblematic of a very, very proud um, council and corporation, um, and whereas the Bispham Depot and um, uh, Cops Row Depot were Tramwell tram Company depots yeah. with no frills at all. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah, just red brick affairs. That's you know, yeah, so cheap as you can <laughs> make it. But absolutely, absolutely. And and then um, obviously, as you you went on this this sort of journey and so on, this was probably Blackpool at, at its peak still, wasn't it? It's... It was the very height. I was going to say in my my lifetime, and it was the height of uh, Blackpool's popularity. Um, immediate post war, right up to I'd say the mid 60s yeah mid, um the town was buzzing um i mean i could go into all of that but um it was uh very different from the way it is now yeah because i i remember before i moved to blackpool and i am a reader of your books and and and, and others and i used to read these chapters of of the 50s and and so on well that was amazing obviously the 30s that was incredible and the victorian days that was incredible you start going into the 60s and 70s and the, the later chapters of the book were made for sad reading. Uh, yeah, uh, and yeah. so to be around to see it at its best must be quite something. Oh, it's, it, was, um, it was a different world. Yeah. It was a totally different world. And um, I mean, it's not um, specific to Blackpool because the, um, the whole country has gone through the same, the same evolving um, mm. change, if you will. Yeah economically and socially and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The impact of television, for example, yeah. uh, destroyed all the cinemas. Blackpool had a very mm. uh, extensive um, uh, network, if you will, of s local cinemas, yes. Martin, South Shore, Bispam, yeah. uh, uh, in addition to the Odeon and the whatever. Um, and that was where you got your, your real entertainment, if you will, visually. Um, yes. But when television came in, uh, initially it was a sort of very, very limited in terms of the number of households that could afford one. Yeah. And it was only black and white and one or two channels. Um, but once it grabbed hold, then it changed. It changed everybody's lives, including the transport operation. Yes. Because uh, in, in those days, uh, people used to go out in the evening, mm -hmm. certainly on the weekends, to go to the cinema or to the shops or whatever. Uh, but when television uh, came in, they didn't, they didn't make the, as many journeys. Y yeah. yeah. And, all, and, and also private cars were relatively, um, I won't say they weren't rare, but the, the number of um, vehicles on the road was uh, maybe a twentieth of what you've got now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thinking of the tram map of Blackpool, the, uh, and where the cinema map was, that they almost overlap, don't they? Yes, yes. You had the Waterloo, you had the Palladium, you had the Dominion, you had. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the the Empire. Yeah. Um, the, the, and the Regent as well. The, right? the yeah. Regent, I remember. Yeah. Well, the Regent was next to Blackpool Grammar School in oh, those course. days. Of course, yeah. So I went to Blackpool Grammar oh. School. Oh, wow. So I had these things, or the Bambach cars, going past my cl classroom for three or four years. How did you get any studies done? That would be obvious. Well, I, out the, I, the answer is I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I spent a lot of time listening to the sound of the overhead wires and the trolley wheels going past, and I could tell from sitting at my desk inside the classroom, which direction the tram was going, yeah, yeah. and which type of tram it was. I mean, that's how, how good I was at that. It didn't earn me any GCEs, <laughs> but it was, um, it was a, a real pleasure at the time. Oh, because that's one thing, and I've talked about this with um, 
Blackpool's tram extension when it eventually opens, right. is that actually that part of Blackpool will suddenly sound different. It, Hopefully it will look that. different and feel different yeah. because at the moment it's a shambles. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it, it really is. I, uh, it's a major gateway. It is a, It is yeah. the gateway along with Central Drive, by the way, yeah. for traffic yeah. coming into the town. Yeah. And um, it's, it's just tragic that it's gone to where it is now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 uh, I know uh, traditionally trams when they were extended they would bring electric services to they bring an investment, they bring investment. investment. They do, don't they? They 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 really have an impact on an a area. Massive impact, yes, because yeah. it's permanent infrastructural investment yeah. whereas a bus is just sort of a mobile vehicle that doesn't really bring anything with it other than uh, transporting people A to B, but a tram yeah is 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 a tangible evidence of uh, a town's commitment to this area or that area I, I, do you know, i've seen lots of studies as to why some people um will switch from a car to a tram but not from a car to a bus right nobody's ever really put their there's their a psychology in. there which i it, i'm not well but, well, <laughs> well well brief to, to to deal with but it's not just blackpool it's a, yeah. you look at the us for example and France, yeah. particularly, yes. where there's been a resurgence, there is a resurgence mm. of trams, tramways, light rail, call it what you will. Yeah. Uh, and along with that resurgence, has become regeneration and a renaissance yeah. of localities and streets where the trams are passing and so forth. Absolutely. And I would say your description of it about a, a town's commitment to an area through that is probably one of the best summaries of why people do that because it, they, they feel comfortable about moving to an area um, because they know that there's a stability to it there. there is, there's there? evidence of commitment yeah. civic commitment if you will yeah and the other positive thing of course is that Blackpool, Blackpool still owns its own transport system yes which is another factor in all of this We're yeah, yeah, massively so. As a as a previous chair, it gave us a lot more ability to coordinate uh, and sow some of the seeds, hopefully, that we'll see in the future about creating networks, connecting to places. We, we They talk now, don't they, about, um, what is it, to transport interchanges as if it's just Hops. a new discovery. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. reinventing the wheel, as it were, yeah, whereas, literally in this case. Y yeah, yeah, whereas the Victorians were doing it for fun. It was uh, Yeah, and they did it very well. Yeah. I yeah. mean, my big thing, to be honest with you, is um, as far as the North Station uh, uh, extension is concerned, that logically it should end up going all the way down to Leighton yeah. and then up to uh, Victoria Hospital. Oh, absolutely. And, and serve the zoo and Stanley Park at the end there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a real r ribbon of, of, uh, of uh, passenger footfall, if you will. Well, my mission before I leave this earth is to try and get that built. That's my mission. That's it. Then if I do it, then I know I've succeeded. If I don't, then I fail. Well, that's I mean, what I want to. Yeah, well, that's great because, I mean, Victoria Hospital is, is a big footfall. Yeah. It's a major employer. One of the biggest on the field. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's 24-7. I mean, it's, it doesn't oh, stop. Yes, absolutely. And just connects the dots, doesn't it? So we've talked about the one thing I, I was always fascinated in, and I just thought, oh, when I knew you were coming today, I was really excited to have this chat. The Martin Line. The Martin Line, well, yes. Yeah, it, it, go on, John, if you could. Uh, I'd love to hear about your thoughts and experiences. And... The Martin Line, um, it's very hard to, to consider today that every three minutes a tram went in one direction and the other direction on the Martin Line. Wow. It was a three-minute service. Wow. That's that's more than some of the underground services. It, I mean, it, some, in winter, it's probably four minutes, but in summer, yeah. it was three minutes. Wow. So, um, first of all, there was very little need for tram shelters. Yeah, of although, course. Although they did have some. Turn up and go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the trams were fast, clean, smooth, quiet except yeah. of course the older ones such as this um uh, but most of them were uh, the bambak cars that uh, became famous in their own way yeah and were exclusively used on the, on the mountain line yeah yeah and um 
and obviously you would have a different type of user there as well you know it's... yeah there were no tourists there was no visitors there was yeah. no um heritage it was a fast frequent reliable and relatively inexpensive service yeah, yeah. with a lot of stops on the way and it was busy in both directions yeah. you had people going into town uh going if you will northbound and you had people going to uh, the shops and uh, seafront southbound to royal oak and in summer you could go all the way you know to south pier yeah although that wasn't necessarily a big uh what's to say a big money earner yeah. um but it did serve a purpose and, and you've got two hats i imagine with this so you've got your your own personal experience of be, being a young man seeing this and, and riding it and then you've got your historian hat as well which which yeah. looks at the that yeah. side and and two must be it must be painful to see what they eventually happen to it uh well it, it it's not necessarily painful but um uh obviously i i have a, a you know a great sense of gratitude uh to uh, the, the respective councils that have kept all of this going yes at a yeah. time when this was the only tramway yeah. in britain yeah and it went against the flow uh, if you will of um uh industry uh, and investment trends in gov <laughs> government time. think yeah, yeah yeah literally went against it yes um but it's proven its point because now of course trams are coming back albeit in a very um ad hoc way in yeah. the uk yeah but like i said if you went to france you'll find i'd say 50 percent at least of french towns and cities over a certain population have uh open new new brand new tram networks yeah. in the last 10 20 years yes and paris is uh, every year is building a, a new tram route in and around the uh, the uh, the city absolutely yeah um and it's interesting i think of all the networks around the world i always find berlin a fascinating one because you <laughs> yeah. and i'm no communist obviously no but, no but yeah. but you see the 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 eastern side an incredible uh, network but not not sort of like a light rail network as you see now much more the traditional yes sort of squiggly going down a certain route going down this road and so on yeah. and then you look at the west and it's just like influenced oh, by uh, yeah. you know, the bus industry and uh, Daimler and all those Mercedes sorry yeah um the uh the Ber Berlin which I I know but not totally well but I went there many times um the East German government um had a, a problem in terms of the cost of importing fuel oil mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, so their um, preference was to retain as, as much as possible electric electric power yes. domestically produced electricity uh, so many small and medium-sized towns in East Germany who which wouldn't have which wouldn't have survived in the West yes nonetheless were if you were subvented yes uh, into keeping their tram tram networks to the present day for the most part yeah in yeah. East Germany um i uh interestingly enough w worked as a consultant to one of them which was frankfurt and the oder which is on the very east edge of east germany on the border with poland oh, okay and uh, it's a town of about i don't know 150 200 thousand people um and um before the war it extended into across the Oder river into what is now poland mm. but when the war ended of course there was a shift of shift yeah. of borders so the um eastern part of the city was sort of hived off to poland um but it still had two or three tram routes on the west side yes and um uh it kept them and has built has extended and expanded them yes. in the last 10 or 20 years that's just one example of many many others yeah yeah that's right and what is ironic isn't it we were talking about transport hubs similar thing isn't it now we're talking about electric transport because yeah. of fuel costs the electric uh, power is in yeah absolutely big time i mean I, I came in and parked my car was at the offices and lo and behold there's a nice big sign that says electric buses, buses. are coming yeah you yeah. know so i mean the wheel literally in this case has gone the full oh. circle uh, 
and, and you know, Blackpool, which was the you know forerunner of electric traction yeah. in the UK, urban transport, uh, is now becoming a completely more or less 100% yeah. electric powered transport, transport system. system again. Yeah, that's right. And what we wouldn't give to have those inland routes as part of that. It'll come. Yeah, it'll yeah. come. Maybe not exactly the way that I would envisage it, but not that that makes any difference, but it will come. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There's, uh, I don't know if you've seen anything of this um, is it ultra light rail. Uh, I've read about it. I haven't uh, paid yeah. a lot of attention to it. Um, obviously, there's a place for it somewhere, mm. but Blackpool's got a standard gauge tram net system, and it will always be a standard gauge tram system. Absolutely, because of all the benefits that brings to connect with. Right, right, right. We yeah. don't, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel in this case. No. It's already here and never left. Yeah, that's right. Very much so. So we, we're talking of, um, we obviously got the Martin route. And we had a number of other routes. We had uh, the Little road. Dix, that's right, Dixon, Dixon road. road. That's it. What was what was your favourite of all the inland routes? Was it the Martin? Or... Well, it was the Martin, yes, because it had so much character. It was it was the only Blackpool tram service that didn't run on the promenade. Ah, uh, yes. And it was the only Blackpool tram service that was all street tramway. Yes. Whereas the others running on the promenade, of course, were. Um, on the reserve track for yes, a large section of, of the route. Um, so Martin was very peculiar in that sense. And it also was the only street tramway in Britain uh, in the post-war period, which actually was upgraded to upgraded to use the latest technology in terms of the tram um, controls and power systems and, and uh, design. Wow. And that, that sort of takes you to a place of how how did you feel when you heard the news that they were going to abandon that that that, that line? Um, well i was a very prolific letter writer to the west lancashire evening gazette as it was in those days and its editor in chief was a guy called sir harold grime and sir harold grime um, i think well i know indulged me in in terms of having my letters published and um, uh, giving me a, an outlet to air my views, if you will, on uh, on transport matters mainly. Um, I mean, I, I I recognize a bit like steam locomotives that you know the era was passing. I, yeah. I I didn't never thought it would come back, but the era was passing. Yeah. And um there were special circumstances in Blackpool which suggested that at least it wouldn't totally disappear. Yes. Um but um I went to um visit while I could the the last the tram networks in Sheffield, uh, Leeds and Glasgow. Yeah. And saw um uh, the final years of those systems um and um uh tried to record um my own modest way uh some of the images from from those uh those cities um but i i felt you know it was there was no there was no um chance that um uh, public disquiet, if you will, except perhaps for the Martin line. There was no chance of public uh, opposition or, or concern. Or, uh, it was going to alter the inevitability yeah. of the street tramway system going. Yeah, yeah. And the traffic that, that built up over the years as well, as is proven, of course, would have made it very, very difficult Absolutely. to run trams. And having said that, however, you are going to run for a very short distance, trams up Talbot Road mm, mm. in what is, what is a problematic uh, infrastructure. Um, and I have my doubts as to uh, how smoothly that will go. Yes, yeah, because um, as we know, when you do anything with transport, one action has a reaction somewhere else in the network. Uh, and these are very finely tuned, almost organic activities, aren't they, moving people around? The, uh, well, the, the crossing of the promenade at Talbot Square is going to be a major problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because motorists, um, particularly the ones, of course, that are coming here for the 
for a holiday or visiting mm. whatever are not inclined to respect the fact that there's going to be a tram coming in their direction in the next three minutes if they can get across the junction in the meantime absolutely and uh, the, the box junction yeah, only works if people it, are willing to follow the i know, the I, know. I, I think there's going to be a massive problem yeah there. and I, I suspect as well those zebra crossings may need to be looked at oh. into controlled ones yeah 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 so, I, I i don't know what the answer is i don't think there's an easy answer no no um and there is isn't there in in a mitigation from car to, to public transport and light rail there is always some pain it's, it's um what you want to do is try and make it as painless as possible and, and encourage people less more mm -hmm. carrot than stick but there will be some i'm suspect in that area without a doubt i mean i've been to manchester quite a number of times over the recent years and um i am I'm not saying i'm amazed but i'm impressed with the ability of the tramway there to negotiate its way through what are very busy yeah. pedestrian and traffic uh, junctions definitely uh, uh, piccadilly and uh, the midland hotel and so forth um so it can be done oh it can it can yes that's right yeah you you need to be very brave um in in, in the approach going back to um uh the 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 old lines one of the things i was always interested in was the the, the Dixon Road line um, and how it approached that that slope up uh, from Green Square to yeah. how how what how did that feel because we don't really have many hills in Blackpool. So well, we don't have any hills with trams on them. Yeah, even more so. Yeah. Um, there was one stop at the bottom of the hill. This is going into Blackpool from mm. Green Square. After you got off the promenade, there's one stop immediately, um, just outside what is the pub there now i think changed his name oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was one stop and the next stop was at the crest of the uh, ah. crest of the hill opposite what would have been derby baths yes yeah. and um so there was a sort of straight i would say a straight clear run uh up the up the incline yes. uh, for uh, for trams and also you bear in mind there wasn't as anywhere near the amount of traffic there is today no. nor is the amount of parked vehicles either yeah yeah um so uh there wasn't a shall we say conflict between uh, the trams and uh, other yeah. other road users quote unquote uh on dixon road in fact dixon road was a relatively i was going to say underutilized but less busy yes point of entry into the town centre yeah, yeah whereas central drive and talbot road are the opposite yeah yeah and i i can imagine as well when i've looked at the photographs some some are very much yours being able to come out that station which and what a station that was <laughs> yes to 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 and then literally the tram was outside nearly or outside, nearly outside, nearly yeah. outside yeah. yeah um the um the trams dis, uh, disgorge trams uh, stopped outside the forecourt of the station in, initially so that unloading was literally out of the tram into the station area yes yeah um and traffic to be to be, to be fair respected the fact that people were getting off a tram yeah, yeah you know and not out. right and not uh <laughs> intending to go and uh massacre uh uh, a car load of uh, visitors uh, going northbound however the tram stop was actually facing the odium ah, which is a little further just right. a bit further north yes uh, so it wasn't um um it wasn't as much conflicting with uh with um road vehicles mm. and um there was usually a duty inspector at busy times at that point uh just to help the the crews hold the traffic back yeah uh, to let people board the tram in particular yes um and the crews would the conductor would usually do the same thing when the tram was coming to unload would sort of put their arms out maybe uh and stop traffic if necessary um but there was a certain degree of uh tolerance yeah. uh, between road traffic and and tram tram stops yes yeah and, and i and that's a that's an important thing isn't it a, a balance because i know there, yeah. are, there are arguments at this point in when i've what i've read 
was that uh, well, tram ownership was increasing, there might have been more dangers. And so I always thought, well, if somebody was brave enough to say, okay, well, if we, if we take all these people off the trams and encourage them to buy cars, there, there will be consequences to there that. There are consequences. There, there are, there, 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 those move. consequences are here and now. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you can't get anywhere. No, no, <laughs> and you've got to find a place to park. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Um, and um, personal mobility is taken for granted, but um, if you've got an eminently good public transport system or network uh, that you can get from the same place from A to B and you don't need to use your, your own car, um, obviously that would be the, the preferable uh, means of uh, movement yes and is and yeah. should be and 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 is in many places i mean i was watching um i was watching on youtube only yesterday a really good um sequence on melbourne trams oh. and um a, a problem that uh, this is in the city center of melbourne which i don't know i've never been there but the, one of the main um traffic arteries and there's a, a tra several trams go through it by it and there was a problem on the line and uh, trams couldn't um, go the whole distance and had to go go back at a, uh, using a crossover yes, in the middle yeah. of what is a busy commercial mm. uh, central road uh, and I was very impressed with the because it was trams were um, every every 30 seconds it seemed yeah uh, yeah uh, coming by and then they had to reverse the point iron and uh, so forth um so uh, i was impressed to seeing it seeing it being done yeah yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah to how they were coordinating yeah there was no and there was no aggro anywhere no no and there is a culture isn't there that, that, that appears or grows and people understand. yes 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 like Man manchester Manchester's a good example yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's um, sometimes it requires councils to be brave to to, to support that culture. And... It's a mind. Well, yeah, it's, it's got to have a mindset. I mean, this council, not now, but in previous times, was very much against trams. Yeah. Um, and if it got its way, would have quite happily done away with the promenade line as well. Oof, there um... were there were. Um, moments um and i wasn't familiar with the internal um political issues but um i read it in the gazette mostly um when there was a very strong anti-tram bias yeah. um by factions of the council and that in fact has been a, a factor over a very long period of time yes yeah. very long period of time when blackpool uh, first uh was obliged to start running buses, mm. um, which was 1921, um, because it bought the tram road company. Yes. And the deal that, that was done by the mayor um, at the time, because he personally bought the company and uh -huh. then turned it over to the corporation. Oh, is this out LB Parkinson, was it? Was it? Uh, your, your company. Yes, yeah. Lindsay Parkinson. Lindsay Parkinson, yeah. Lindsay Parkinson, yeah. right. Um, a bit before my time, but nonetheless, um, I'm going to say, yeah, one of the um, one of the issues, well, there are several issues, but one of the issues which prompted him to do this personally was the fact that the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Company had a, had designs on buying the tram road itself, uh, right. and coming into Blackpool in, from Thornton directly to Cleveland as a starter. Um, and then potentially, obviously, running their own trams into Blackpool on the what was the Dixon Road uh, yes. line, and um, uh, a consequence of that was that part of the deal that um, Parkinson did were to uh, the tram road company uh, was to say, look, we'll provide a bus service from Thornton Railway Station to Cleveland's Railway Station. Uh, so you won't need to have a railway built yeah. along that uh, path. Um, and that obliged Blackpool Transport, or tramways as it was, yes. uh, to buy two buses. Now, before they built the two buses, there was a big spat in council over several weeks between various factions saying, we, we can get away with buying one bus. We only run one bus. 
Then there was another faction that said, no, we need three buses. This is amazing. Mm. And this was all reported on in the local paper yes. in great detail. Yeah. You know, the speeches by this member and that mm. by the council meeting. Um, fascinating stuff. Um, but Blackpool got into bus operation um, by virtue of the fact that the mayor, the mayor bought the tram road. Incredible, isn't it? What yes, an irony. Yeah. What an and irony. the first bus service that the Blackpool Corporation tramways ran was outside Blackpool, Blackpool. not well, even in not Blackpool. even in the town itself no 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 one of the things I've always enjoyed actually when I've looked at some of the minutes and we were out politicians today will often think oh they've just discovered falling out um, and it never happened before it was all very cordial oh no it wasn't oh, very cordial. it was vicious wasn't yes, it yes oh it was very mean there was um, yeah and and poor the poor transport manager at the time tramways manager um, Mr. Furnet, Furness, Furness. Um, I mean, he had he was responsible for the electricity department, yeah. responsible for the illuminations, yeah. was responsible for the tramways, uh, and they were the mainstay of the town. Yeah. All of this, yeah, and they're yeah. all expanding. Uh, Blackpool was growing rapidly. I, I can imagine a few sleepless nights. Oh, that's a lot of pressure, isn't it? Amount of effort that he put into it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they didn't get any thanks for it either. No, no. History has been very cruel. It, it yeah. hasn't really appreciated some of the efforts. No, of, of no, these, not these at people, all. Has it? But when Mister Luff came along, of course, mm. he grabbed the uh, the bush, uh, uh, the bull by the horns, I should say, yeah. uh, and uh, put his stamp of authority on the dis- debate council <laughs> debate immediately. <laughs> Yes. You know, yeah. he produced a five year plan within six weeks wow. of what was going to happen. Yes. And rammed it through the council. Yeah. And, and never looked back. <laughs> and some of his legacy we enjoy today. It, we? Absolutely. Yeah. We're very, very, we owe him a great, great debt. As, as, as Should be a others. statue to him somewhere. Yeah. I uh, believe so. We, we somehow forgot, didn't we? Because um, in, in the town hall, I don't know if you've been in Blackpool Town Hall. Only the. Only the Bit, so. Ah well, I, we'll organise. I'll take you up. They, you've got these portraits that go up the stairs, right? And you've got um, in, until recently you, they've just moved them around. But you had Mayor Cocker, huge portrait, right? And everyone goes, oh yeah, that's the chap who did the Winter Gardens. And then right by the door into the council chamber, you've got Mayor Bickerstaff. Bickerstaff, And in right. between them, and these two very fine bearded gentlemen. Right, right. But in between them, you've got uh, this this young gentleman from the nineteen twenties. Mayor Parkinson, right, Lindsay, and say, right, and there's obviously a recognition about no. his efforts at, right. at that point, and he know he physically looks different from from that. He looks no beard, no beard. He looks of of his time, and um, and obviously they recognise him, but somehow along the way we we forgot we forgot who this man was, and 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 others as well of their time. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's something definitely needs to be be recognised. Well, that should be you know recorded in whatever displays or mm. um, um, exhibition is put put on in this tram town venue. Yeah, I agree. To to join the dots. Yeah, because it's more than simply you know the tram the trams or the buses. You know, yeah. The people who put this together. You know, yeah. people operated it. People um, made it happen. People made it work. They did. And it drove the economy, it drove experiences. And it's still it? doing that. Still doing it, isn't it? Still doing it. Yeah. We've had people today on the tour for all over the United Kingdom, Scotland to London. And and they all that inner five year old is released as soon as they get here. It's 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 in, it's incredible. Yeah. What well, one thing I wanted to do as well, John, is is you you had incredible foresight. Not many do at the time, because people don't appreciate what's in front of them until it's gone. But you realised what we had and we're busy trying to record as much of it as, as you could. Uh, and uh, that's why I believe that everybody in the future owes you a huge debt of, of gratitude because the, the it information... It was something I enjoyed doing. But but you, you did it. And so I think it is important people recognise that. And, and Well, I did my books, you see. Um, uh, so the, this is my legacy here. Yes. Um, yeah. And um, I'm, I'm hopeful of... Uh, so for viewers, this is uh, Blackpool buses and trams in the 1960s. It's exactly what you've just been saying, isn't it? Yeah. Right. It's the la- it's the last one of about four or five I did, um, going back to 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, I'm doing one of trying to get my head around doing a bus a bus book. 
Blackpool, Blackpool's buses yeah. specifically, because Blackpool also had a very unique bus operation at least up till the uh, 1970s, mm. uh, mainly because again of Mr. Luff and his centre entrance uh, fixation. Oh, yes. um, and also the fact that the buses were all built in Blackpool. Yeah, something we forget now, issue. isn't it? In terms of, and we've there's been a well publicised conversation about manufacturing and indeed, location. indeed, yes. and, yeah. and that should continue. Yeah, that yes. should, very much should continue. Absolutely, um, and so you, you're in the 1960s. It was 1961, 62, 63. Right. Not, not great years. We've seen things being closed off and. Yeah, how how busy were you then trying to capture all of these things? What was that like? Um, well, it was it coincided with the fact that um, uh, I had uh, family issues. Um, I, I lived with my grandfather. My mother was in London. I didn't. My I didn't have a father. Uh, at least uh, I had a father, but he was in Poland. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, uh, my grandfather, who I lived with, um, died suddenly. Oh. Uh, I was just in the middle of doing my GCEs and, uh, uh, at the time, and it was a very, um, uh, I won't say difficult, well, it was difficult um, just yeah. to sort of get through it. Yeah, survive. Um, yeah. And at the same time, the tram routes were closing, as you say. Uh, so I did my best. In a way, it took my mind off things, yeah. going around, um, following this development, all that. There was always something going on. Yeah. Uh, the tram Rigby Road workshops were busy as hell, yeah. um, building trailer trams, creating trailer, trailer, trailer trams, scrapping these cars, yeah. um, buying new buses uh, every year in large numbers it must be said mm, mm. um and um the face of the town was uh, was uh, was changing as a consequence um uh so i i didn't have very much time to think about the uh long-term issue i just felt that i wanted to as much as i could at the time with my very limited <laughs> resources uh record what i was living through yeah yeah i, I we i say we are so grateful uh, and many are because without that evidence and, and there, i know there are one or two others as well without those images and i've seen some incredible shots from the winter gardens of the saint john square uh, yeah, that's uh yes that's uh, uh colin colin mcleod who yeah. used to climb up on the roof of buildings and uh <laughs> And that was his specialty. I, I wasn't that adventurous, <laughs> but um, I did take a few from the Blackpool Grammar School building um, to record what I was what I was seeing. Yeah. Um, it, it it was important to record it because, quite evidently, you know, it was it was a passing era. Or it was an era that was changing. Yeah. Um, and it needed uh, needed at least to be. Um, kept uh, kept in mind uh, and it wasn't until 50 or so years later that um i you know i i saw i saw what i had and i saw what there was available from other sources um you know i mean there's a picture i took in the bus yard just across oh, yes. there uh, this is the, the new open top conversion um next to the tram workshops uh that i was able to compile um visually a story of um of these um changes that were were ongoing this was a very this was a failed experiment of um a blackpool uh, bus conversion yes it was the only pay as you pay as you enter rear rear entrance bus in the country um and it had to be fitted with two staircases one to go up uh and one at the front to come down um so its seating capacity was uh, ah. just ludicrous hence so, why it failed yes it failed <laughs> me almost immediately um 
Yeah. Uh, they also, at the same time, did a one-man tram, um, which uh, also failed uh, for various uh, operational reasons, uh, mainly because um, the driver had to um, the driver had to bend, turn left, uh, in order to negotiate the uh, cash yes. uh, it was cash of course with yes. chain with chain you got you know, and, a t- and a ticket right <laughs> yeah um so you can imagine the queue of people all trying to get on the waiting time for yeah this. um never mind three minutes a tram coming it was oh no, no, yeah. no and the, the other one of the biggest issues the union said no way we're we going to do this uh because if the trolley comes off oh. and the driver has to get out and go and put it back on the cash box is there unattended. Yes, you know, yeah. And there was no security as we know it. No, no. You know, there was no glass screen or anything. Um, so there are a host of uh, similar problems to do with it. Um, and all this was ongoing while I was, you know, uh, covering the uh, covering the story of uh, of the transport system. Hopefully, for for fifty years later <laughs> yeah. to do. To do books on it, although it wasn't it wasn't in my intention at the time. I took the pictures. I just wanted to record it. Um, and here we are. And this has gone on and on and on with the, you know, with the uh, double deckers with the mm. platform doors and uh, all of this stuff. And what today is, is crucial. I remember when uh, I became the chair of the board. I actually took uh, a booking one of the because we're lucky to have. A company that that where people care so much about it, they write about it and record its its history. So I took this this book in uh, to a board meeting, and I explained to everyone that uh, we are just custodians of this amazing organisation, and sometimes we have to make decisions that that are beyond the balance sheet that's in front of us. We've right. got to think about our place in history. Very good. And if you think of it like that, because of its past, and you can learn all of the things that didn't work as much as those that did. It, it gives you this thing that actually I, I have got a duty of care more than just making sure that it, it su- survives this year's audit or whatever. It, it's much more than that. And sometimes that involves a different type of decision making. And and that's why I think knowing your past and, and what didn't work is so important. And not many organisations have that. The council doesn't. Um, Stagecoach don't. Blackpool Transport does. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, that, well, that's local ownership, you see. Yeah. That's, that, that's the margin of... Uh, I'm saying the margin of error between a commercial, true corporate commercial entity uh, and a publicly owned operator. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, which is where we have the, all the problems with the railways now. Yeah, absolutely. Who owns what and who's responsible and accountable are in different places, aren't they? It won't, won't work until it's all brought back together again under public control. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I noticed. I can't help but notice, and it's a great irony. We're on uh, tram 147, and you have a, an incredible t shirt there. Isn't this marvelous? Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? Uh, there uh, were more than just this tram because most people just think we only had one of these. This is tram number 48. Um, uh, this is from the museum in Oregon, where the tram is now wow. on the Pacific coast of the US. And it, I'm wearing it because my daughter visited Oregon. Um, four or five months ago um, on a sort of vacation in the Pacific Northwest. And I said, if you're going there, you absolutely have to go to this museum. <laughs> Otherwise I'll be disowning you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and she's done this before, by the way, but not, mes- not necessarily to a backward tram. And um, so she religiously sought out the, uh, the museum and arranged to visit it and to s- inspect this standard car, which is just like one of these. Uh, which is uh, being very well kept uh, by the museum itself and operated. Uh, what, what I like there is the, and we've had visitors from um, San Francisco. Come right. Here, is that there we have a t shirt brought in America promoting Blackpool yeah. in big writing. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that is the power of these, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, they're icons. They're icons. And um, there's another one of these in. Uh, the Seashore Museum in uh, Kennebunkport, Maine, wow. uh, with an open balcony version. Uh, and of course, 147, which is there, 
um, also went to the States and was uh, put away in a, a little depot in um, what was called Columbia Park, Ohio, near Cleveland, uh, where I saw it many years ago, uh, never operated because it kept falling off the track. Um, uh, but the owner of the owner of the was a caravan park actually, uh, not with an operating trolley line around it. Uh, the owner had a big big thing about uh, streetcars. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, he died. Gerald Brookins is name. Can I leave you uh, and display this item? Ah. This is a single line staff. At the very end of the Martin service in 1962, there was a party held by the staff in Martin Depot, and I was invited to it along with Colin McLeod as being the sort of, if you will, most regularly seen tram enthusiast uh, over the years. And so um, I was given this by the staff, uh, the staff of the staff uh, at Martin Depot, and this was used on a single line working so the tram, trams going in both directions over a single track, the only tram that could actually move is the one that had the staff. And when it got to the end of the single line section, the driver would give it, or conductor would give it to the guy waiting to go the other way. So that's how it worked. If you didn't have the single line staff, you couldn't get on, the, on that track. So anyway, I was given this as a, uh, as a souvenir. That is incredible. Yes, just show it. Sure. My word. That is so Blackpool Corporation Tramways. Blackpool Corporation Tramways, Martin. Martin. Yeah. That is a real unique piece of history. How how old would this piece of wood be, do you think? Do oh, this is go back to the twenties. Yeah. And how many this is this has been well used and yeah. loved and yeah. hasn't yeah. it? How many hands and and this, this, this is a key part of the operation as well, isn't it? Something very like much this. so, very much so. I'm sure Bispam would have had one and probably Rigby Road would have had one. Um, uh, well, and so with your permission, will we be okay to display this? Well, um, I want to talk to you about all of that. Yeah, um, yeah we'll, have separately. A, we'll have a conversation about yeah. this. So that is seeing the words, seeing the words, because this is the Holy Grail, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Martin? yeah, I've got it's... other bits and pieces from 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 the same party as well um it was the final night of the depot wow and what what that must have been a sad night that must have been a bittersweet it's awake it was awake yeah yeah, yeah i can imagine it was... it was like a family there you know they it, was, it wasn't self-contained but the crews had worked on the the line of a lot of a, a lot of their um careers and so they knew the passengers the regulars that they they picked up on the on the uh, line and and um, uh, and of course each other. So it was a uh, it was really a family affair. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can imagine, and I, I've seen obviously bits of the, what remains of that 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 depot because this was this was a good looking depot. Wasn't oh, it, it was. Yeah, it was corporation. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, seal of the corporation seal on the on the top there, the clock. And everything and uh, staff rooms and uh, uh, kept clean, bright, you know, interior. Yeah. The Blundell Street Depot, which was down there, was a very dark and dismal affair. Yeah. Um, but it was it was built uh, in in several stages, um, whereas the Martin Depot was built one one piece at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So it was it was um... in fields. It was in fields as well. Oh right! There were just fields there. Of course, when it was yeah, was, yeah. It, was that early nineteen hundreds, oh nineteen oh one, yeah, yeah, when it was built. Gosh. And then Whitegate Drive sprang up around the track. Oh, wow! Yeah. yeah, connecting obviously. All the, all the house builders are happy as hell. Y yes, I can imagine. And yeah. they still are. They still are. Yeah, yeah, because it wasn't just Whitegate Drive; it was the surrounding streets. Waterloo wasn't it? Road. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, Waterloo Road School. Yeah, you know the health. Uh, what well, the original Victoria Hospital was on Whitegate Drive. Yes, yeah. But was that where the was that where the walking centre or was that a different? More or less, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Just, I have wondered just, uh, if it was. was yeah, there. and um, the new one was built at the same time as Stanley Park was built uh, on the eastern end of the of the town, which was also opened up by the fact that tramway tramway went e inland. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it made it accessible, didn't it? It was a short walk, really. Yeah. From, 
the head to the park. Um, so when when that was um, when that was that that sort of night that it was was closed, right. um, what happens? Did they suddenly take the wires down, or yeah. the wire, almost immediately? Uh, they took the wires down uh, from the tram depot round to Royal Oak, right. but they kept the wires up from the tram depot to Talbot Square because inside the depot there were a number of trams that had been sort of, uh, I won't say marooned, almost marooned, um, and they couldn't get out because there were trams being scrapped. Yeah. Uh, and they needed to have depth access uh, to get them out again. And um, the last the last tram to come out of the depot, I think was tram number, standard car 48. Wow. The very last tram to leave Martin Tram Depot. It might have been 147. I don't have to think about that one. But anyway, um, uh, that was about uh, six or eight months after the line closed. Gosh. Yeah, that was... That must have been a moment. That must have been a moment. I, I didn't see the, the, that that um, because the tracks were all grounded over, uh, uh, so the flashes of light and bangs and the, and the other. Um, I joined the army in '63. Uh, I signed up to the army, got away from Blackpool, uh, went over to Germany. And whereas the Dixon Road line closed in 63, I was in Germany, and more or less at the same time, the, the place I was based, sent to, I'm based in Paderborn, they had a tramway, which also closed in 1963. Oh, gosh. So, so I, had the, I had the dubious pleasure of riding for just a few couple of months, actually, this little dinky yeah. German tramway. Um, which was also green and cream oh, with dear. trolley poles um, from uh, Senelaga to Paderborn. Um, so I, I had a bit of um, sort of, um, uh, not a, not a uh, prize, what do you think? Consolation prize. Yeah, yeah. And a yeah. consolation prize. Yeah. Um, so there we are. But, but going f further forward, 40 odd, 50 years, I was responsible with Colin and I think um, Steve Palmer to buy the last tram that ran to Fleetwood from North Station, oh, number wow. 290. Wow. Um, was it, was that, was, that's right. So I, in, in order, was it so it was the Dixon line the last line to close? Yes, then, right? yes, right. yes, yes. And yeah. this was the last service tram on the last um, wow. street tramway. Um, and that tram now is in Lowestoft at the East Anglia Museum, where which has very recently um, bought a piece of large piece of land next to it and building an extension and a yes. new depot. Yes. And 290 is in the new depot and is being Brilliant. returned to, I think, um, 1940s or 50s condition. Wonderful, and it's yeah. great, isn't it, to see these things yeah, being yeah, yeah. protected? Yeah, and, and yeah. We had uh, well, we had seven six one, the big orange thing in the depot. Oh yes, that was yes. one we got. Yeah, um, purposefully, um, we weren't able to do anything with it. But at least we kept it, and now it's back. Here. Yeah, because it was a Noah's Ark moment at one point in. I know that at one point this was even talked about becoming a housing state itself, oh. and I remember battling away. As were others to say, this is bonkers. Yeah, of course it is. You've that got be a bloody uh, revolution. And and why, when you've got everything in the centre, why put it on the edge of town? Fortunately, saying ahead one and that, and the fact that the uh, the land values weren't weren't great. This isn't London. Worked to our advantage in in that that way because when you've got all this infrastructure here, oh, it doesn't make any sense at all. You know, and then, you know, putting the depot on the seafront at the very end of the line mm -hmm. is not necessarily a good idea because with global warming uh, and sea levels rising, yeah, yeah. that's going to have to change. Uh, and I know from where I live uh, down in Anchor Zone, um, things corrode for fun. You know, satellite dishes fall off the wall very quickly. Really? Oh, yeah. The corrosion levels are crazy, yeah. So, um and, uh, and I think there is a, I don't know if you saw that Guardian article that was, it's gone out this week. We had a Guardian journalist up looking at some of Blackpool. Oh. 
and he's written a lovely piece, although he did confuse us with Rigby Road and Tolbert Road, but we'll forgive him for that. But uh, he recognised actually that Blackpool's past is driving its future. You know, this, this is, he came down, he loved this, he went on the tower, he went on Pleasure Beach, um, some of the piers, the Grand Theatre. But it was great to see him talk so positively about Blackpool's heritage. Yeah, drives. yeah, yeah. There's a, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here, which, uh, I mean, the founding of the Pleasure Beach was actually from, from New York, from Coney Island. Yeah. All the early Hiram Maxim flying machine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that's right. Globally significant stuff, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is, and it's underrated by under underrated by Blackpool's council mm. over the years. It's oh, the trams, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're they're even more pop. I won't say popular, but they're even more uh, an intimate, iconic part of Blackpool's yeah. image they as are. the tower. Yeah, they are, aren't they? They are exactly they are a horizontal version, almost. Yeah. But, um, so um, uh, seeing it, you know, change into, evolve into what is now hopefully going to be a, a world-class, I'm not going to say museum, no. world-class exhibition. It has to be. Yeah. Telling the history of the electric tramway in, in this town is is really, really important. And, and it's funny you say about the museum question, because when we first started this conversation three years or so ago, it was just after covid you naturally pivot yourself oh it's a museum and it was like fortunately wiser heads came to me and said no no museum's not the right term because right. It, it's it's about it being lived in Correct. it's the fact that you, you see engineers walking around in the smell of oil it's re just as important as the preservation area. Correct. Correct. it is living and i was like you're right and one of the things that everyone says when they come here is they like the fact that it is oily and smelly and and as those living engineering right right well, there's no glass it. cases that's it it's, mm. it's not a disney type space it, right. it's, it's a real space no commercialism yeah and that's that's important you don't lose that in that that journey to create this this uh sustainable heritage attraction that there's a place for all of it connected together in fact there's a good thing you know as part of it is just leave it as it is obviously put in health and safety mm. uh, because as it is, is just as attractive as it would be if you invested five million pounds in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if anyone wants to invest five million pounds, we very much welcome it. <laughs> but, you're, but you're right, it is capturing that, isn't it? Because it's what makes it, and, and all the visitors we've had, and we've had a lot now since we opened two or so years ago, or coming up to two, they, they love it. They absolutely go, wow, I'd love the fact that I can see an engineer working right. away over in that corner or, or right. um, the, the fact that it is, it is uh, real. Uh, it, not everything is pretty. I mean, one of the problems or one of the issues, I should say, I'm a member of the Tramway Museum Society that have been for many, many, many years, but not active, uh, is the fact that um, they spend an inordinate amount of time and money uh, doing up their old trams to a what is an immaculate, pristine, as built condition. Yes. Yeah. And of course, trams were not like that. They were rugged, worn, noisy, um, lived in, if you will. Yeah. And that's how I remember them. Blackpool's slightly different because it wasn't uh, an industrial town. No, we had to make it nice for visitors. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, you don't have to have a nice. A nice paint job um you know i know you've got one four three there and that's a wonderful uh, project um but um to see the tram as they are yeah in service so, for people um as opposed to a don't touch uh, yeah artifact yeah it, it absolutely. it's very important it, yeah because what happens i think this is happening in the um the, the steam heritage rail world is that you're you're losing a generation that may not have seen them as kids. Of course. I mean, you have to be over 70. Yeah, yeah. Just... You have to be. I mean, look, look at me. I mean, we're all on our way out. We are uh, on our way out. So the people that recall uh, or have a memory, living memory mm. of these things as they were in the real world um, will be gone in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it gets smaller and smaller, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Um, so you almost want that new generation to keep coming through, which is why these being on Blackpool's prom, Trundling up and down is just as important. continue to trundle up and down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To trundle up and down. One thing I wanted to say as well, I, and it's not in my gift, but I am going to do my very best. As you, were, uh, you, you reminded me of something when you said 
you were on the last tram from the station down Dixon Road. When we eventually get a tram up Talbot Road to the station, different route, but going same similar destination, it seems like logical that you should be on that tram. Oh, thank you. So I, I, I'm going to do my very best to no. see what we can do. It's not in my gift. I'm, I'm not the chair anymore. But I, Who is the chair now? Uh, yeah, it's Councillor John Bolton. So Who is Leighton. That's right. He's Leighton, so he's your... And, and he lives not very far from where I am. So he'll be a good person to ask yourself as well. Yeah, so well, if you, do you do you talk to him at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah, John's a nice chap. Yeah, he's a good well, fella. Well, maybe you could mention we've had this. I will. Shit. Tell him I'm on Brooklyn Avenue. Right, yeah. And you can also tell him my wife was born in Brooklyn. Oh, oh wow. My wife was literally born in Brooklyn, oh, New York. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, so living off that wasn't intentional, it just just, just happened the way these things yeah. ended and so on. Yeah, yeah. but no, I, I've just thought that would be a lovely connection of, of recognizing the past and the present and the future because all three are connected, aren't they? Um, certainly around Blackpool's goes back to what we said earlier, John Blackpool's sort of investment in the community. Yeah, comes I, through this. I think if the council could just re you know cotton on to the fact that they've, they've got an, an iconic iconic um, environment which um, reflects um, the uh, involvement of Britain's probably most popular or uh, well visited seaside resort town um, in the in the literally in the country uh, and much of the originality of the town is still here yes yeah so they you know, got the pleasure beach which by the way wouldn't have survived if it hadn't been for the trams delivering the punters there. Oh, absolutely. From yeah. 1905 or whatever it was. Could you imagine how short Blackpool's promenade would have been without them? It couldn't have done been seven miles, could it? It was impossible. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, um, uh, all the, the, these stories should really be sort of enhanced and brought together, yeah. whether, you know, visually in some sort of film business mm. segmented film or video i mean i don't know what will go on here it'll be after i go but um at least you've got a good display of tram and hopefully some buses yes oddly enough yeah i believe there are some conversations about that to, to happen as well i'm i'm not party to it because my my role is more about capturing evidence capture talking to people and building the volunteer teams up so they they operate it all down here one thing i wanted to do is um is I know we've got footage that somebody's kindly sent us, cine, cine film stuff of the Martin Line operating, right. and have that just playing on the wall, yeah, so yeah. people actually go, "Oh wow, I never realised that it, it it we had our own version of a bit of a Melbourne thing going on." Because it does remind me of some of those. those... Well, the utility crews find there was a tramway there when they start digging oh. the road up all the time. Don't they just? It's like yeah, <laughs> you can't do radar scans or look at your archives. Yeah. Dixon yeah. Road, you know, Lytham Road. Um... Lytham Road Bridge was one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Famous instance recently. Yeah, I know. Um, even a bit of the Leighton line when they were um, doing the uh, council and Sainsbury offices. And they uh, took the tarmac off the Talbot Road. Yes. The rail, uh, the rail, the the top head of the rail was, was taken out, but the um, I forget what it is, the web or something, ah. basically, it's still there, it's still there in most places in the Talbot Road. Yeah, and what I've discovered, um, amazing what you discovered by being in, in local government, is actually how much the roads keep ra being raised all the time. You can sometimes see where a sign is ha almost half into the road of uh, when it was lower. And... When you cross over Whitegate Drive, as I've just done to come here, and you cross over going uh, east-west, the uh, Whitegate Drive goes like that. Uh -huh. uh, the, there's a bump, and the yeah. bump's there because the tram track's tram still track's there. Still, is that what's... Oh, wow. And I think there may be bits of Central Drive as well in the same same vein. Same vein. It'll be interesting to to see or work out what remains of the tram infrastructure still on those those inland routes, isn't it? Um, I think you need a sort of a time team um, sort of ground survey. Thing. Yeah. You know how they went and did the Titanic as well. You know, get all this. Ground, penetra scans, don't ground they? penetration radar. My word, that would be an interesting map. Yes, it? It would, that was a nice exercise for somebody. Yeah, yes, it would. It would. I want to say a, a huge thank you to John. It's been an absolute.
delight to speak to you. I, you didn't disappoint. I've been really excited to see you. I could go on, ravage on for hours. Oh, and I'm <laughs> definitely, definitely going to get, get you back. We're going to carry this, part two. this chat on, right. part two, definitely. Right. Okay. Um, for anybody who wants to find more about uh, some of uh, John's research and the, where John's books are available, there's an incredible website. Uh, it's tramtalks.co.uk, isn't it, John? Yes. So if you go onto that website, I'll put a link in the bottom of this uh, video. So you'll be able to see it and click onto John's website. Uh, well worth a read. It's where I got my cartoon tram fact from, was, was from you. Really? Yeah, you did a fantastic write-up on the Roberts tram cars. And it was, uh, yeah. So you see, this, this is why you're my go-to person. <laughs> so I say thank you again, John. Lovely to see you. You're welcome. And we'll do another one that was uh, part two.